<laughs> wow. It's almost the end of the day for my chicken, so in some hour they go sleep here. They are confident also. <laughs> <laughs> so do you get your exercise, Cedric, by chasing the chicken? I had Alexandre Torton run around and uh, catch some chicken yeah, yeah. for exercise. Uh, uh, Alexandre do that maybe two, three years ago. I don't yeah. know if, if he continued to do that. Um, I think uh, I can keep the chicken in the vineyard uh, 10 months to 12 months per year. Uh, they just uh, have a problem with the grapes when she starts to be uh, mm. in the beginning of the maturity. When she becomes black, uh, the chicken start to eat. No, so, yeah. <laughs> so. Todd, maybe you start the recording now. I already did. I, 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 as soon as he got to the chickens, I turned it on. I was like, we yeah, got to get this. <laughs> uh, we're at 22 people so, and we're not at 10 so, yet. So let's give it a couple so more. I, I, I take my American car ah, and nice. let's go for a, a small visit. <laughs> An off-road segue. Yeah. Cedric, wait before you start your tour till we start the event. Yeah, don't, don't start yet. We're going we're gonna to give it a couple I, minutes. I, I, don't, I don't start yet. Okay, no problem. <laughs> I mean, we're still enjoying it, but you might have to say it again as long as you're okay doing that because we like hey, your tour. Hey, build another seat for Brad so Brad can sit on the back when you drive. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. Actually, my current CEO was the head of manufacturing for Segway when they started out. Oh, so yeah. I have connection to it. Thanks, <laughs> We got 25 now. Okay, good. I figured we were going to get around, best case, around 40. Okay. So if we get to about 35, we should probably be pretty close to what we're going to be. Well, people always come in late, too. So. Yeah. And no one, no one has to worry about it since we publish these and, post, you know, they're published and posted. So whatever you miss, you can see again. That's right. So. Maybe I'm going to show Cedric some pictures from Myriad last night. And he could plant some Cabernet over there in Quill up on the slope. <laughs> <laughs> Ramon just showed up. Cabernet, yeah. Cabernet from Myriad Cuttings. Masal from uh, Myriad. Ah, David, you have some Noir Reserve. <laughs> Excellent. Ramon. Yes, yes, or, we do. And my wife Laura is here drinking it with me. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Frank's, yeah, drink, Frank's drinking Cabernet, so Helm has a frozen Ober. <laughs> Yeah, I'm matching you, David. I got my Noir Reserve as well. <laughs> I see Yao with some special club. Hello. Wow. Which year? Which vintage? 15. Uh, this is uh, 2013. Uh, yeah. Very good. Super, super vintage. I love his vintage. <laughs> hey, hey, Brad, what's the disgorgement yeah. date on your uh, Noir? So mine is from May of 2012. It's the oldest bottle of uh, Mousset I have. So this is an 08 base with six and seven reserves. Okay. Ours is uh, July of 2015. Yeah, yeah. probably 10, 11, or 12 base. I, that was right, I think, when Cedric changed uh, over to the, the newer non-vintage. Yeah. It's really good. <laughs> I'm, I'm opening mine now. We'll see how, how well this one's held up. Are you going to savor it, Brad? You know what? I, I, I savored in my session session last night. Hold on, I'll be back with a knife. You guys, and I'll, I'll savor in the cellar. Okay, we'll just wait. We'll wait to start until you get back, and then that'll be our celebratory kickoff. Well, he says he wants to do it in the cellar. Hopefully, that room he's in is the cellar, so we can see it. We got the chickens yeah, in the cool. background and a and a saber uh, coming up. That's good. That's good. We have a really nice turnout, 34 people. That's really great on a Saturday morning for our very first champagne event. Mm -hmm. yeah. you, you, gi you give me instruction when, when I start the... We will. No the tour. Just <laughs> make tour. Sure make sure your chickens stay out there, though, and wait for us. Oh, Frenchie. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Unmute Santa Rubens. <laughs> what? Chicken stay here. Unmute, unmute Santa Rubens. I want to say hi to Santa. To who? Santa. Who's Santa. No, she just disappeared. Oh, Santa iPhone. <laughs> hey, Santa. Hello. Hi. I'm meeting. I, I'm meeting uh, with all my family. Like, yeah, you know. Hey, say hi. We, <laughs> hello. We just, uh, hello. Hello to Brut. Brut Natur. <laughs> <laughs> I prepare one Brut Natur for tonight. 
<rire> les vignes de mon village. Yes, the life, the really, 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 really nice dog. But yeah, hi guys, hi everyone. Thanks Frank for inviting me. Really, sure. really appreciate that. What time is it in Berlin? Oh, in Berlin, the uh, time is the same as Paris, is the same as um, Rance. It's uh, seven o'clock in the evening. Yeah, so, and uh, you? It's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. In the morning? Yeah. Oh, oh, Bruce just felt it's not too early to drink champagne. No, no, no. Never. 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 Yeah. <laughs> In California, it's crazy. Eh? Up to the 10. <laughs> ah, that is Congrats. Congrats. Congratulations, hmm? Santa, for your uh, week. Printemps des Champagne. I see some uh, live with you and some grower. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yeah, I did my best. We did uh, quite a lot of uh, tastings and uh, yeah. most of them were first time for, for growers too. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Hey. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I have uh, like, you know, three bottles opened and uh, three already drank uh, out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Good to see you, Santa. Should I savor it, Frank? Do yeah. it. Yeah. Oh! That'll be our launch. <laughs> Say something, Brad. Say something first. Hold on, hold on. Say something so you're on the screen. All right, so hello, everybody. Let's have a big party for Cedric. Everybody say hello. And get this all here favored. Hey! Wow. Easy. Or it didn't come back and hit me in the face, so that's a success. A lot of experience. <laughs> okay. Nothing broke in the cellar either. All right. Oh, Very good, good Brad. All right, so we're going to get started. We've got uh, almost 40 on here, which is what we expected. Um, so I'm going to go over the rules really quick. We are going to uh, have everyone muted. And then um, I'm going to do some intro in terms of rules and what we're, how we're going to format this and introduce Frank and Brad and Cedric and anyone else that they want to talk. And we've got some chickens that need to be featured as well uh, from Cedric's Vineyard. Uh, so just so we know, um, at the end, uh, whenever there's discussion or whenever it's opened up to Q&A, use the raise hand feature. And then we can call on you and you can speak directly with anyone that you, that you wish, wherever you have your questions. Um, but we'll wait till we sort of launch that in terms of, of figuring out when to, when to do questions and answers. Also, a lot of people are using the chat function to write out what kind of wines you have and, and continue the discussion while you watch uh, on the video. So thanks everyone for coming. And Frank, uh, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Frenchy. Thanks again for uh, sticking it out. I feel like uh, we've got, got a second marriage now, one with my wife and one to you. And, I, and uh, look at that face. How fortunate am I? <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. It's uh, 10 o'clock here in uh, Orange County. And uh, one o'clock on the East Coast, and then where several of you are internationally, it sounds like it's uh, 1900 or seven in the evening. I feel really fortunate this morning. I was excited to get this going. And as I was thinking about the event um, last night, for us, for the first time, featuring not only a champagne producer, but having that producer on and uh, having him broadcast from uh, one of his plots. Actually, you'll, you'll see Cedric in a moment in his Chardonnay plot. Uh, so we're joined this morning by um, Cedric Mousset of Mousset Fee and Brad Baker, uh, the dynamic duo, as I'm going to call them today. And we're going to have some good discussion with them about um, Cedric's philosophy and what he believes about champagne and the, the generations of his family that began this wonderful craft that he has inherited and, and uh, is running now. And uh, we'll talk to Brad and get some of his wisdom to help color in the picture, if you will. Um, so I met Cedric in 2018. Uh, I took my first visit to Champagne and my only one. Uh, and living so far away, uh, sometimes you can only get there once a year. I was supposed to be there next month and I was gonna visit Cedric uh, in a few weeks, but of course uh, that is not gonna happen anymore as much as others on this event have canceled travel. Brad's canceled travel, so has Santa and others. But I met Cedric in 18. Uh, he wasn't there that day, but I got to spend time with um, Julie, who works with him, and she took us around the property, 
and we went up into the vineyards and I left there with a greater appreciation of the wines, the philosophy, the, the commitment to the environment, both at the winery and in the vineyard and um, the quality of these wines and how they remain affordable. And what you'll learn today, I think as importantly is the passion that comes out of this man, um, the thrill for what he does, the authenticity, which is so important to me comes out of Cedric and you'll see that. So Cedric will, We'll, we'll kick off with you in a minute, but I also want to um, say a few comments about Brad. So many of you in the Wine Berserker community and, and some of you that have joined us from Instagram uh, know Brad from his, um, what I perceive to be the deep relationships he has in the region uh, with the producers, the culture, and a guy that uh, knows his body of work and knows what's going on. So frequently on Wine Berserkers, we'll have a discussion about champagne or we'll ask kind of an obtuse really off the street question. And we asked Brad to contribute and Brad comes back with the truth. So we love having Brad on, provides that color and that deep knowledge. And Cedric with his on the site experience as one of our featured growers in my cellar. So I'm just thrilled they're on today and thank you all for making time to be here. So um, Todd, did we do the rules yet? Okay. Yeah, I'm we so did. excited. I, I missed him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've got someone's um, text banner on my screen for some reason, Todd. You got a text banner? Why are you, are you wanting to do a screen share? No, I just, um, I was talking and someone else's name was popping up, but that's okay. Yeah, no, whenever someone comes in uh, and they unmute themselves, they shoot to the top. So I, okay. that's why I kept to keep muting everybody that comes okay. in late. <laughs> All right, I'm going to remain on speaker view. And so Cedric, what I want to do is turn it over to you and I'm just going to let you free flow for a minute. Tell everybody where you are, say some things about yourself and then, and then you can get on the scooter. We'll put Brad on the back and then we'll take off and go to Fort Terre, maybe La Butte de la Vie. Okay. Okay. Uh, so for start, everybody, uh, hello. Uh, thank you uh, for, for all this organization. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Frank. And thank you, Todd. Uh, so we are at the top of Quill right now. Uh, I can try to share uh, with you um, the paysage. So, in fact, uh, here you have Bayeux. Here you have um, beginning of Châtillon-sur-Marne and a little bit late, little, here you have Châtillon-sur-Marne. And here are, you have the Marne Valley. Okay, so here we are in Levaros. Uh, you can see my chicken. Here I use my chicken because the, this plot we have 40% deep, uh, steep, sorry. Uh, so uh, normally it's the horse who work the soil here, but I, I try this year to put the chicken for see if they can keep the grass very short. And, uh, and also here normally I have a big problem when, when the spring arrive. Uh, here we have a lot of insects who eat the buds. And uh, it's the first success because uh, this year the chicken eat completely uh, the small insect, and we have not any more problem with uh, with we could we could we uh, we talk about uh, um, the type of insect uh, that we call uh, buds eat. I don't know in English, but in in French we call that, and it's a big problem in Champagne. So, um, a chicken is a good good solution. Wow. So, uh, in this direction. You have quill, so I can take my American car. I can talk uh, about um, the terroir of quill. We are a little bit uh, mm, not classic, in fact, because you see the valley uh, that you have here, the Marne Valley. In the left side, you have Epernay, and the right side, you have Chateau Thierry and Paris. And in fact, uh, in the left side, when, when you follow the river, the left side is La Rive Gauche, the left side uh, uh, with the east exposition, and the right side is west exposition. Uh, here you can see that we are completely per perpendicular to the valley, and uh, we have a south exposition. So we are, it's, it's our first chance because the south uh, exposition for all vineyard is a war in, in the world is very nice uh, for work 
it's very nice. For example, we can remove the leaves in the east side in the beginning of the year uh, for avoid the botrytis. Uh, voilà. So it's very nice. And the second uh, interesting thing is uh, we, we have green clay everywhere in the terroir of Quill. Uh, the green clay that we use in cosmetic. Um, so it's exactly the same green clay. We, lapel, we, we, call, we call this green clay elite. So you can see the village of Quill, the castle of Quill. So I do a small visit and we, we go open a bottle uh, in my cellar, okay? <laughs> so we leave already Levaros and we arrive uh, very soon uh, in Libou de la Ville. So you can see a part of my plot here. Cedric, would you like me to show the map of the village now and we could talk about the plot so as you go to your cellar? Oh, oh yes. Okay, I'm gonna share yeah, my yes, screen, please. Todd. It's very good idea. Okay, so let's go to Wine Lobby. I'll back so this, here in a minute. The village, uh, uh, the, the part that you show is exactly the part where I start. Okay, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show Varos where you started, which is here at the top of the hill that right against the exactly, forest, Exactly, right? exactly. I'm okay. exactly here. Okay, and then... And so uh, exactly at the top of the village. It's a very quiet village. It's only 140 people. So everybody know everybody. <laughs> <laughs> And you can see on the map, folks, that I'm putting on your screen, this is Cedric's uh, domain here. You can see the solar panels on the top. So I assume he's going to come down this road here and come in and then and go into the, to the winery. And this is the family house right here. Yeah. I can make that a little bit bigger. I'm trying to... Frank, could, could you, uh, um, in your map, could you show the uh, Les Fortes Terres, please? You bet. Here it comes. There's Forter. Exactly. So why not? I'm in the Forter. Okay. Okay. So I'll stop sharing so people can see you. Here you have four plots in Forter. This is the first plot. Uh, it's the place where the soil is the less deeper that we have, uh, only 25 centimeters before the green clay. After you have some different plots um, that I don't work. And here you have one more. Okay, one more plot here. In fact, I blend these four plots for make my QV special club. And in fact, uh, we talk a little bit before I start the Zoom right now um, with uh, Frank and Todd. And he asked me uh, how you choose um, the plot for make. So this is not anymore mine. This is right, the last one. Well, this, so is this is the plot that goes into your special club. It's not the Rosé special club, it's the other one. Ah, alors, uh, so the four plots that I show you here, it's only for Les Fortes Terres, for okay. the, the, the white special club. Correct. Uh, after Les Bouts de la Ville, it's in this direction. I can show you after. Um, Les Bouts de la Ville, it's, uh, we chose with my favor Les Bouts de la Ville because it's my more old vineyard and maybe uh, the more concentrated grapes that we have. It's a small quantity of grapes, of course, we can make a lot. But yes. uh, here we, we continue to be in Les Fortes Terres. This is also my vineyard. It's a very beautiful plot, but the soil is more deeper, little bit more deeper. So the one is different. So we can't use for make more special club. And it's very, very sad for me. <laughs> voilà. So it's almost the end of Les, les Fortes Terres. You can see you have one part of road. And here, the last, the la uh, some neighbor, neighbor's uh, vineyard. And here, it's my last plot in Les Fortes Terres. But here, the soil is still more deeper. And if someday you come in, um, Mm, allez, between November and uh, January, you can test the three different uh, plots. The, the part that we use uh, for the special club with the soil not deeper. The other part, the big uh, plot um, 
with maybe we find the green clay at 40 centimeters. And here it's more classic in quill, it's 60 centimeters. And you can see very easily that the wine is completely different. We, of course, we have the same terroir, we have the same meunier, we have the same style, but uh, the wine is different. So um, the plot that I show right now is Les Bouts de la Ville. So maybe, can I help, can you help me, Frank, for, see, for show Les Bouts de la Ville? Yes, I will do that right now. Wonderful. Oh, so we, you, you still are in, yes, Les Bouts de la Ville. So, alors, Les Bouts de la Ville, yeah, my, the plot is exactly uh, where you show with the small end in the left side of the road. Here. Voila. I do experimentation also. Uh, I put um, 20 sheep in uh, all my plots in Les Bouts de la Ville uh, just before the end of, uh, before the spring. Uh, it was very interesting. It's like uh, a golf after. They do a wonderful job. So one right now, let's go for visit my cellar. So maybe I can talk a little bit about uh, our story. Uh, in fact, we know today that we are grower in our family since uh, 19, uh, no, 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 1629, sorry, not 19, 1629, so minimum 12 generations. I don't know more because we can't find more. Uh, during a long, long generation, uh, they just sell the grapes to the big brand because, in fact, we are grower uh, and producer of champagne since only four generations. It's my great grandfather Eugène who starts in 1923. This is great. I love this. I show you that. So uh, this is the road Eugène Mousset because my uh, great grandfather Eugène and my grandfather Edmond was before um, resistant during the Second War. And they keep some American guys and some English uh, guys to uh, them house. And uh, because they are resistant uh, during six, seven months, they have to work uh, in a camp for work. And only my grandfather come back and Eugène never come back. So this is the, my grandmother's house today. She, she still lives here. And uh, everything starts here uh, in 1923. Uh, because the price of the grapes uh, decrease, uh, increase, my great grandfather was very tired about that and decided to buy some barrel and, um, and one press. And he don't sell any grapes during three years, no money during three years. And he find um, American guys three years after in 1926 in Paris who arrive fro, uh, from uh, America for start a company business of, uh, uh, sorry for my accent, but get catering, you know, a uh, company for make food for people. Um, you understand that or not? I, Can you repeat that? All... Yeah, so food catering, caterers. Oh. Exactly. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. So uh, after three years, these American guys buy 100% of the production of my great grandfather. So uh, it, it was wonderful. Uh, this is the future reception place. Uh, so if you come back after the COVID, I can receive you here. <laughs> it will be super cool to receive you, not in life like that, but in, in super life. And right now, it's my winery that we built uh, 10 years ago with my father. So we, we try to build something uh, the more efficient possible uh, and the more sustainable possible. So we produce our electricity with our sonar, so the solar panel. We produce our hot water. All the water come from this well, uh, that all the water that we use, and after all the water that we use go in a tank, and uh, we put this water uh, in our compost during the summer. So I do that yesterday. 
um, because we need a lot of lot of water um, for uh, avoid for avoid that uh, the compost become dry. Oh, sorry, I, yes, super. So now yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm almost ready for open a bottle. <laughs> so welcome to my winery. Thank you. If you have, if you have some questions, please ask me. Maybe so, we can. Can you say a little more about the green clay? Because I think um, you made some mention about that. Uh, yeah, I guess, yes. Frederick, it'd be really good, especially to understand which villages it goes through and how did Quill become the heart of it? Because you have Jonquery, Olize, Dateon Sur Marne. Are those the only villages that really get uh, the, the elite? Olize, I have only uh, one third hectare. It's very small. Uh, today we work uh, 10 hectare point five, but in Olize I have 0 0.3. Uh, it's not my best vineyard. The best one is Jonquery. Uh, the, 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 the more beautiful is in Cuil, Jean Cri, and, and we have a part in the beginning of the road of Châtillon sur Marne. But uh, alors, for talk about the green clay, I have some here. I don't know if you see really good. Yes, I see it. So this is exactly the same green clay that we use uh, in cosmetic. If I if I put uh, water inside, after I can put in my head. Is that why my, my skin is very beautiful? <laughs> Looks like Todd French's skin. <laughs> hey, hey guys, give me that. Give me that, please. Yes, I can, I can keep for you. Please some. Get, send me some like half a kilo or uh, I will use it. I know how to use it, really. <laughs> pour the champagne on your face. It's the same thing. Just pour mousse right on you. Rub mousse in your skin. <laughs> Oh yeah, I know, I know, but like uh, once a week, uh, it's maybe would uh, would be good with this clay too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I tell very often that um, my champagne, we we need my champagne for drink in a spa. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. So Cedric, how does that green clay affect you, in your opinion? The, the taste of your grapes, because the Meunier that you grow is very, very unique when compared to other regions. I mean, to me, it, it has a lot more elegance, but also fruity, but never heavy. So it's very different from the Coteau Sud de Epernay, very different from, let's say, Meunier in Lude or other areas. So, so how do you think the green clay affects the, the flavor and the aromatics in, in the wine? I, I don't know really good, Brad, why? We have a difference like that, but I, I, put my, uh, I heard you really good with that. It's not really fun, but uh, you heard me? Yeah. OK, super. Yeah, it's better for me. Um, uh, in fact, I don't know why, but that's right that the menu will come from the green clay when we test uh, the most part of people who test in blind test talk very often about uh, Chardonnay taste. So very uh, yellow fruit, uh, white peach, um, some citrus, some uh, pomplemousse, pomplemousse, I don't know, yeah, pomelos. Yeah, grapefruit. Pomplemousse. Yeah, and, and, and uh, it's not, uh, we don't wait the meunier in pomelo. that side. We it wait pomelo. Pomelo, pomelo. We, we, mm -hmm. we wait the meunier uh, in, um, in red fruit more than that, that yellow fruit. Uh, so I, I know that we have a very uh, special terroir, and I look for for my eventually so development. I look for only uh, um, this type of soil, uh, only green clay, and only self exposition. Maybe um, if you can, if you see in in your bottle, you can see that we don't are grower. We are we are negotiant manipulant. N M. Okay, I buy grapes, but all the grapes that I buy, uh, five years ago, I create a society of service. Uh, so I work for some owner during all the year with my team, they pay me, and at the end, I buy the grapes. So I, I can um, control 100% of my production, and also I can choose with each owner I work, uh, and, and, uh, and with 
which lieu dit I work. So Cedric, so, I'm drinking the, the, the special club rosé and there is, yeah. there is a grapefruit note, but there's also a blood orange note that's coming through this. That is that what you sometimes sense too? Yeah. It's exactly that, that side um, after we, we can feel different. Um, everyone can feel different, but uh, I, it's, it's, it's normal. <laughs> yeah, so, so Cedric, talking about, uh, it, to me, it does not matter whether you're a negociant or a recoltant. It's all about uh, having good care ah. in the vineyards. But all of the grapes you buy in, you tend to take care of those vines as well during the season, correct? You're doing yes. most of the work. So it, it, even if they're not yours, they really are. Now, in fact, uh, 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 yes, but it's okay. So in fact, uh, normally a society of service in Champagne do this work for earned money. For me, I do, um, if I spend one, one euro, the guys pay one euro. I don't make money with this. I just want uh, that the guys, uh, the, the big problem is, I won't do that without chemicals, you know? So for the owner, he, he, he take a risk. So uh, I pay this risk because I pay the grapes more expensive than the normal in quill. Uh, and also I pay the risk because uh, the guys uh, use a society of service cheap, <laughs> you know? So it's my present. But like that, I can choose. I, I, I'm lucky because I know really good um, the terroir of Jean Cri, Quill, and the beginning of the Châtillon's Road, uh, because all my work, I can talk about after that, after, but you, you see all this uh, small stainless steel tank, I have different size and I can, uh, I never blend a plot. I, sometimes I blend the lieu dit, like I show you in Les Fortes Terres, I blend the four plot. But I never the I, I won't keep um, terroir per terroir for have more choice during the tasting and for maybe make something better. That's why I have right now two press and in this it's two four thousand kilo press. But I never put four thousand kilo. I put the number of kilo that we find um, in in the vineyard in the plot. Yeah, no, I think Cedric, that's important for people to understand that sometimes what you put in those tanks is just a few rows from that vineyard. So it may just be four or five. Of course, rows. you keep them all separate. That's extremely expensive, time consuming. It takes a lot of work to do that. Sometimes I have two barrels. <laughs> it, 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 and you know that uh, it's not very um, lovely, but uh, I don't use. Uh, wood barrel. I just use wood barrel for ratafia. Um, I need drinks. <laughs> uh, I, I use a wood barrel for ratafia and my rosé and red wine. But uh, right now for the very, very small plot, I buy a stainless steel uh, barrel. I try to show you that. Yeah. So what, what drives your choice over steel versus oak? Because many Winemakers right now, oak is trendy. Uh, is it to better show the steel? true terroir from Quill, or, or why stainless steel for all all of the champagne? Haha, <laughs> it's a super good question. Um, alors, um, I I think we have a very uh, special terroir with Bourgogne and with his green clay. I think uh, we can have some mask in the wine. For example, the sugar during the disgorging. Uh, the wood. Sometimes if you buy a new barrel, uh, uh, you can have some wine very woody. If you test a Chardonnay from everywhere in the world very woody, you can't have idea about the terroir. Um, the mask. It's a mask. It's, it's a mask. Everything, is, uh, 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 yeah, we, we tell about mask more. Yeah. Uh, some time, too much oxidation with a red wine, very nature, you know, with nothing, you can have, uh, it's all, one more mask. You can know if it's a Pinot Noir uh, from Burgundy, if it's a, um, Cabernet from Loire, 
or if it's uh, I don't know Gamay from uh, from uh, Beaujolais, uh, if it's too far in oxidation, it's not good, and you can't find the terroir. And the last thing, and for me the very important thing about we 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 have to tell about the protection that we use that most part of one grower use the, uh, the sulfite, the sulfur. The sulfur also is a mask. Less you use sulfur, less you have a mask, more you are crazy wine, but without oxidation, okay? So I work a lot uh, for avoid the sulfur. Is that why I build all this stuff? Is that why I work only in stainless steel? All my vinification is without oxygen. Our maximum, the maximum without oxygen. So um, I work for uh, put the minimum of sulfur. The quantity of sulfur when I do the bottling is uh, very, very small. Okay, so it, that's why I work only with stainless steel. Um, and we Eric, can tell uh, one more about question that. about sulfur. Yeah? Oui. Uh, how, what, what is the, what is a very very small? You know, it's just like a, I'm. I have to ask you the precise number just because uh, you know uh, I have these questions for, from for my family. Of course, for give ID uh, all the 19 that I put in bottle two weeks ago uh, are so no blend, only the 19 mm -hmm. vintage, around 11 milligrams in total. Okay. okay, so it's natural wine level, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the perpetual, yeah. uh, less than 20, because in this perpetual, I have 50% who come from reserve wine. And before, we, for in, in this reserve wine, we bring sulfur. Today, I stop a little bit. So for in this tank, I don't, it's so big tank, uh, 25,000 liter. I don't put sulfur this year. I bring some sugar, six grams per liter, and I bring 1% of yeast. So during eight months, the yeast eat the six gram of sugar and they do a little bit of alcohol, but they do a lot of CO2 day after day. And if the yeast brings CO2, we don't have oxidation and we don't need sulfur. I have, this is one part of the experimentation. I have six part of experimentation. Here, I have exactly the same wine in this stainless steel barrel um, with some sulfur, but not sulfur from petrol, sulfur from mine, not natural sulfur. I can explain you after what okay. is the difference between the petrol and the sulfur, and the natural sulfur. Here, it's pressure tank, okay? So uh, here I put six grams of sugar, 4% of yeast. And you can see that the pressure start to arrive. This tank is not full. I can put 1200 liter. Uh, I have only 800 liter. So the yeast, eat the sugar, consume the oxygen, bring some CO2 and some pressure. So I keep fresh my wine because after the yeast died and bring a reduction. So the first tank, the, the CO2 go, down, go, go back, you know, to the top of the tank. Here the CO2 stay inside. I have exactly the same mixture in some magnum, you know, so like that. I, I have to reopen the magnum, but I won't see the difference. What is the best? <laughs> what is the best? The reservoir in here, the stainless steel barrel with sulfur natural, uh, the pressure in tank or the pressure in barrel, and in parallel, um, in that box, I have a big bubble of ice, 200 liter, uh, with classic petrol sulfur. And in my cellar, I have a small tank, uh, one more time with the same wine, 
uh, with uh, so classic tank with some uh, so far from mine. Um, so we have six different wine. Uh, so maybe we have six different evolution. And in January, uh, we organize. A, I want. I, I will organize a big tasting. Uh, different day with a lot of people. <laughs> you can come with pleasure. Uh, and we take the decision for the future. But you can understand that I won't avoid in the future to bring software in my perpetual. And so Cedric, how does that affect how you press then? So if you're not using sulfur and you're, you're kind of right on the edge there, so you must really pay a lot of attention to the precision when you're pressing to make sure that everything's done softly, gently to prevent that oxidation. Alors, 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 alors. Uh, I use some software in, in the press. Uh, before I use three grams from petrol. Three gram is not too much. It's not too much because, alors, in particular with the Meunier, because the Meunier uh, is the gray variety that we have the skin, the more fine. For example, when I start all this ex experimentation, uh, I, uh, I see, I saw that uh, for one press of 4,000 kilos, uh, between the moment that we cut the grapes and the moment that we fill the press, we lose for the Chardonnay uh, zero liter of juice during the transportation and the time that the grapes wait here. Uh, for the Pinot Noir, we lose 20 liter for each 4,000 kilos. And for the Meunier, we lose between 80 liter and 120 liter. So it's too much. And it's catastrophe because the juice that we lose, uh, you have a part who stay uh, in contact with the skin, who start to take a color, and who start to take oxidation. So right. you have to more bring sulfur. So in Champagne, you know that we cut the grapes all by hand and not, um, not by machine. Uh, so we cut in a small bucket and after we transfer the small bucket in a cases of 50 kilo. Okay. Um, I stop that. Right now we cut directly in the small cases that you can see here. It's a uh, cases of 15 kilo. Uh, the, the picker cut directly inside, take very big care. The cases arrive here, and after we put in this room here, we are a cold room at eight degrees Celsius. I don't know how much in Fahrenheit, so it's not very cold, but it's not very hot. Uh, temperature 50, 50? 55 degrees Fahrenheit. That's still chilly. Okay. 55, 54, 55, yeah. Okay, okay, 54, 55. I have to remember that. Um, after, before I have one press, now I have two press. Like that, it's never the press, it's never the grapes who wait that the press finish. It's the press who wait the grapes. So when I decide to press, poof, I press. My grapes never wait. Um, with the small cases, I lose zero liter right now, like the Chardonnay. So just the cases change was wonderful for the quality, wonderful evolution. So now I have these two press. Uh, these two press have adaptative capacity. So I tell you that uh, I never have 4,000 kilo in my press. So here, if I have 3,525 kilo, it become a press of 3,525 kilo. I have also a possibility to decrease the temperature. One more time. Here I have Mar de Champagne here, will pass at maybe one degree. And the grape juice arrive in contact with this thing before go to the cellar. And we can decrease in three seconds, five degrees Celsius. Less the grape juice is hot, less you have oxidation, less you need sulfur. Okay? And for finish, I build this cellar, who are for the moment unique in Champagne, because it's like a big aquarium. And here you have those who arrive here. The other one 
wine cellar here, grape juice cellar. In the other one, we do uh, alcoholic fermentation. I keep 100% of the CO2 because one liter of grape juice in fermentation produces seven liters of CO2. All the CO2 arrive here, and the CO2 is more heavy than the oxygen, so it takes the place of uh, it, it takes the place inside the tank. So we don't have any more oxygen, and, and uh, the grape juice is not in contact with the oxygen during the 24 first hour. And like that, we can uh, avoid to bring a big quantity of sulfur. And the next, the next uh, today, I, I work a lot about the future. And in my future, I don't want to use sulfur who come from distillation of petrol. I want to use um, natural sulfur. So this is sulfur from distillation of petrol. It's not very bad. Yellow. I think the, the yeah, it's completely yellow. It, I think it's bad uh, because this one, when the company uh, transforms that in the liquid, like uh, uh, like water, you know, mm -hmm. they have to bring some different chemistry, not really good for headache and not really good for people. This is natural one from a mine. In fact, I use this one. I put in this machine here. I put a, one quantity here. I put a fire here. I close this machine. I open this bottle of oxygen. The bottle of oxygen brings oxygen here. And we have a combustion. We create a gas from sulfur. And the gas pass here. And we put in the wine. And we have, um, uh, we have a gas from sulfur completely natural. Because this, I'm, I'm, I know that this sulfur comes from Poland, from a mine. And, uh, and I'm sure that it's very qualitative. Um, and I'm sure that we have no heavy metal inside. And, and my, the future is, uh, I want work like that. So during the next harvest, I, I use that. Fascinating. Can, you, can I ask you to back up for a minute, just talk about a little bit about your farming practices, Cedric, and what your philosophy is on of how course. you take care of the land? Yeah. Uh, in fact, it's exactly the same philosophy that we tell about wine. Uh, I won't put nothing. <laughs> uh, so it's difficult to put nothing, but only sulfur, copper, and different plants. Uh, and the quantity of copper should be very, very small. So for um, give you an idea, um, uh, in the wine, we use only sulfur today. And in the vineyard, we use um, some sulfur and maximum two kilo of uh, copper per year per hectare. Okay. But we use a lot of plant in particular in the beginning of the year because we want to uh, give, I use the plant for like uh, give a food to my vineyard, like that the vineyard is very healthy. It's exactly like us, um, more we are healthy and less we be sick. Uh, and if we are a little bit sick, uh, we have more power for the battle with the disease. Uh, and after for, if sometime we have some problem, I use essential oil. Uh, essential oil are, are very, very interesting because when we become sick uh, and, and, and when, we tell, uh, when we talk about the vineyard, when the vineyard is sick, uh, before be sick uh, is exactly like us. So the pH of the vineyard is around 6.7, like us. When it becomes sick, it can uh, arrive at four. The pH goes okay? down. So the, the pH decreases a lot. We become very acid. And you have also a big oxidation. And more it's acid and more you have oxidation, more the disease is important. So in fact, I use essential oil from uh, um, orange. Uh -huh. uh, work completely in the other side. 
very basic, so very high pH, and very reductive, so no oxidate. So like that, I can bring my vineyard in the other side, and like that, the disease is less important. So I control the pH of my vineyard every week, uh, and like that, I have an idea about the, if, if the disease arrives. Uh, today, I know that my vineyard is completely healthy. The pH is 6.7. It's wonderful. But maybe in three weeks or one month after a lot of rain, but we, we don't talk about rain right now. We start the year very cool. Uh, we have the COVID, but we don't have disease in the vineyard. So not, the world is not completely bad. <laughs> Uh, so, so hopefully, Cedric, 2020 is good. That'd be three really nice years with 18 being good, 19 good, and now 20. So can you talk a little about your thoughts on 2019? Because in my view, uh, from what I tasted when I was there late in uh, last year, the wines are spectacular, maybe the best that I've tasted and one of the best years possibly ever in Champagne. What are your thoughts? Uh, um, I I'm completely agree, but I think... Uh, 2019 was my more wonderful wine for different reasons. The vintage is amazing. Uh, I have these new toys for the first time. So maybe the toys change my wine. The vintage are amazing. Uh, for the, uh, wh when we do the test in January of the 2019, I'm completely disappointed because uh, I don't recognize the wine. It, it was a, I don't sleep really good the, day, the, the night after. Mm. But, but uh, today I'm, I'm very proud about 2019 uh, because the wine are wonderful. Uh, and I arrived to do that with not too much thing. <laughs> No, no. I, I use. I don't use uh, analogic product in 2019, um, and only some sulfur. Not not natural sulfur yet, because uh, I I just get the machine just before the harvest, but um, it it was too short for do all experimentation. And, and in fact, in the beginning, I don't find the good powder of sulfur uh, for make a good job. Uh, and well, I, 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 well, I, I, I love um, each time do experimentation uh, before take the decision for, for change all in my winery. If that's why we have this big experimentation um, that we start three years ago for the reserve wine, the perpetual wine. But well, I, I work in, in 2002 in the Comité Champagne in the, uh, in the experimental uh, cellar. And uh, I love experimentation. <laughs> in, in fact, we are not baker. The baker can, can restart the recipe every day if we want, if, if you want. For us, it's more complicated. Uh, when we take a decision, sometimes we have uh, on square five years after. So that's why I love uh, make a lot of different experimentation year after year um, for maybe... Make more possibility the year after of evolution, and of course, each time the evolution should be uh, greater in, in in the wine, but also uh, more and more sustainable. Brad, do you have any um, other questions you want to lob to Cedric? Uh, not. We can probably float some folks to start raising their hand and maybe do some Q and A to. Um... Let some interaction with the audience take place. Yeah, no, let, let's do that. I mean, I, I've got like probably five hours more questions I could take them on, but yeah, let, let's have some other folks ask some stuff. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we've already, uh, we've got one, but just to remind you guys who came on late, um, there's a raise hand function. It depends on what kind of device you're on as to uh, where you'll find it. Some have it next to the participants uh, tab at the bottom. Some have it over on the right side. Just raise your hand. And we'll call on you, and when doing so, we'll unmute you so you can ask directly of whomever you wish. And David Buker, you're first, and you're unmuted. Go ahead, David. Hi, Cedric. Good to see you again. Um, Hello. So, Hello. 
So do you, do you just use the perpetual reserve for all of the wines or do you have separate reserve wines that you use for some of the other um, non-vintage wines? For the non-vintage, we have four, four non-vintage. Lord de Gênes, who come from the perpetual wine. Mm -hmm. The DT, who are the evolution of Lord de Gênes, only a late disgorging. Uh, so he come from, of course, the same perpetual. Mm -hmm. The, ro the rosé effusion will come from the same perpetual, but I add, um, I have some, I add some red wine that I keep here okay. in perpetual also since 2003. Before it was, okay. I have one part here and three barrel in um, in the cellar. Uh, so these three wine come from uh, this perpetual, but I have. One more perpetual who start in 2014, the first year that I stopped chemicals in the vineyard for Levin de Mont Village. Okay. Thank you. And, and, and I do that also in perpetual because I love that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting, Seth, right. but most people don't do a perpetual of red wine. That's really cool. Yes, it's my father who start in 2003. Uh, and every year I try to do. 50% very precisely for in particular for the red wine and the red wine come from only le, from Les Bouts de la Ville. Okay. All right. We've got another question. Mason, you are unmuted and you can go ahead. Great. Thanks everybody for putting this together. Um, I have a question about the Lextra um, bottling versus the regular bottling. What's the difference? Is it just dosage? Is it disgorge later? Um, I've had both. They're both, both. great. Uh, <laughs> curious about the difference. It, it, it's, it's exactly that. It's both. In fact, uh, it's, for example, I, I, I start the disgorging of Lord de Gênes, the regular after 15 months of aging. For the DT, I start the disgorgement uh, after 50 months. One 15, the other one 50. And because the aging is more important, the dosage could be zero, could be 0 0.5, could be one, but not Very more. Uh, it, 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 yes. Normally, the menu, we don't need too much sugar, but uh, after 50 months for a perpetual wine, you test that, it's, it's okay, it's perfect. Very good, thank you. Edric, can I follow up on Mason's question? I, that, what, the point you just made, I wanna ask you something. So on, um, on the Terre d'Elite, there's some dosage in that, right? Terre d'Elite, yes. Is that it's the depend of It depends on the vintage, uh, but uh, the dosage is more and more low uh, interdilite uh, around five. Made, it, uh, 2013 was five. Yes, 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 yes. But 2014, it's two grams. Two. I think. Yeah, it's two grams. Yeah. What? So, are you making that decision based upon the vintage, or is that a style change? No, no, no. Uh, we do this decision um, in blind test. Um, in fact, uh, I do a disgorging one month before I take the decision. Uh, I do a disgorging with zero gram, 0 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, uh, until 6. And, and uh, we are maybe 12, uh, all our team, of course, my mother, of course, our analogist. And sometimes um, I love have people here, um, just who are in visit or people who work here, my electrician or some, someone else, but people who don't know too much uh, the wine, just wine lover like that. And, and uh, the most, I, we do that very seriously. Uh, we don't test 0, 0, 5, 0, 1, 1, 5, 2. In fact, um, we blend everything. I just give a number per bottle, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, and uh, at the end, everybody say the two bottles that he loves. And we write, no, 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 no. And the most part of the time, the best bottle, everybody tell, I love this wine. Maybe not the first, but 
the second. So uh, I think that for the champagne, we have only one dosage. And it could be different year after year. So each time in blind test, I think is the perfect way. But in Mont Village, which is the other cuvee, that one is always zero? Ah, ha, ha. Or, or, uh, to always zero. Why? Yes. Because for Levin de Mont Village, when we do the blend, we choose wine very drinkable in still wine. Okay? Mm -hmm. So I know before that it's already drinkable. So the blend that we do this year for Levin de Mont Village, after the blend, you can um, take a beautiful decanter Zalto and bring to your house and you drink this wine, it's already drinkable. Uh, you see? Yeah. So in fact, when I start in uh, 2016, the bottling of Le Vin de Mont Village, um, I look for Champagne Nature. And that one's always zero. Mm -mm. And it's also um, because I choose to do the bottling with a cork and not with a caps. Because um, with the cork, during la prise de mousse, the cork brings a lot of oxygen because the cork is very new. Uh, and after la prise de mousse, after one year, the cork becomes like a wood and we close completely the gas exchange. If it's a caps, it's, um, we bring oxygen, a very, very small quantity, but during all the life of, during all the aging. Um, so the cork in Champagne have double interest uh, we have a complete fermentation in bottle because we bring oxygen to the yeast, so we have no residual sugar. And after, for the aging, we can keep 10 years and we have very fresh wine. And I keep now 1,500 bottles of Levin de Montvillage every year for make a late disgorging, but not uh, 50 months, 180 months. Wow. 10 years. Uh, 120 months, 10 years. When will sorry. that be released? Uh, I, I start in, uh, uh, with the vintage, to, uh, uh, no, it's not a vintage, but I start with the bottling uh, uh, 2016, so we have to wait a little bit. <laughs> um, the DT of Levin de Mont Village can start in 2027. Wow, okay. We have to be patient in Champagne. Thank you. So the DT concept that you're talking about is not all that different, Brad, than probably what Jacquesson does? Yeah, I mean, you can look at a lot of producers. It's becoming quite common now, uh, whether it's Jacquesson, I mean, Bollinger is kind of the most famous one to do all these late disgorgements uh, of wines, especially now you're seeing more people do it with uh, Brut Sanzanet uh, with blends. And it's a completely different wine uh, just because of the amount of time it's spent on the lees and then the dosage is different too. Uh, plus, it's had perfect storage until life as well. It's been sitting in the, the, the cellar of the producer. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. That's a cool concept. Again, you got to have the cellar space to do it. And for a small producer like Cedric, you don't always have that space. Yeah, I've, I've it, said that I've tasted those wines side by side, and I prefer the Eugène, I prefer the, the DT better than the regular bottling, which is, I think, what Mason was showing a moment ago. <laughs> I think it's pedagogic to have uh, one DT uh, if you compare to the regular. I love uh, the Jackson spirit. I love uh, Igby Aurier. I love uh, uh, all the people who do a perpetual because we find some now. Um, and sometimes I'm surprised about my wine. And also maybe um, for me, you know, since a long, long year, uh, the Meunier in Champagne is the black sheep. Uh, before, 20 years ago, we tell about uh, Chardonnay, wonderful Pinot Noir, Grand Cru, but we never tell about Meunier. It's uh, René Krug, maybe long time, long time ago, who are alone to tell about Meunier. Uh, René Krug buy a lot of Meunier, uh, not René Krug now, but the Krug house, buy a lot of Meunier just in parallel from Quill. Uh, Passigrini Saint Gem because they have only green clay in the soil, and but the most part of the grapes are by per Krug. 
but if you don't talk about Krug, nobody uh, talk about money. It's just the beginning today uh, because some growers do the work. Uh, for be serious, when I start to do the DT, I want to show that uh, we can, even if it's all, only my classic non-vintage, um, I want to show that I can keep a classic non-vintage with a lot of vintage inside because it's, it's a perpetual. Uh, today, the perpetual, the, the DT that we sell today, we have already 12 vintage inside. We keep 50 months in aging. So it's not too much, but it, it's already serious. And we don't bring sugar. So we don't bring mask. Uh, and it's still very fresh and we still have a very beautiful tension. So for me, the DT is just for for say to people who say the money is heavy to drink, the money we can keep in aging. My DT is for show to these people that the money you can keep in aging. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you can come in my future reception place and I, maybe I can open very old money for show you that it's very good. <laughs> Thank you. If Brad or I can ever get back there, we'll take you up on it. Yeah, you have to come back. <laughs> we will. Scott, uh, Frenchy, is there more questions? Well, we had one from Scott Brunson, but he's, he's pulled this question, I guess. Um, I don't see him back up there. I sent him a message to see whether okay. it was answered or what. Let's well, see. I have one more while we wait. Um, Cedric, uh, when we talk about Meunier producers, and I know there's a few that I have in my cellar as well, along with yours, who do you, who do you respect and like? Ah, it's a good question. Um, alors, we are lucky because uh, the Marne Valley move a lot right now. Uh, and we can find some wonderful money. Um, the maybe more old house who start to tell about money in, Cham in Our Valley is uh, the, the grower Benoit Tarlon. Before it was Jean Marie, you can find some wonderful wine in the Tarlon family. Um, in this small area, uh, we have uh, I, I, in the Marne Valley, you have, of course, Vincent Desobos from the Champagne Francoise Bedel. Bedel. Uh, it's not in Marne, but it's N, it's a little bit more far. Mm -hmm. When you come back, you have Benoit Déhu, mm -hmm. la, la Rue des Noyers. Amazing, woody, but amazing. Uh, after you have Flavien Novak that we start to heard about him. Flavien Novak in Vendier, he make crazy thing with a wonderful spirit. Uh, Fabien Cazé, Champagne Cazé Thibault, um, in Châtillon sur Marne, uh, organic also, very small production. Uh, very good. Um, Aurélien Lurca. Uh, I'm sorry? What about in the south? In the south? South of Mount Valley? Brad, is Bouchard making anything like that? No, it, it, once you get down to the, the Ober, the Cote de Bar, you, you're pretty much, it's, it's Pinot Noir country. Of course, Chardonnay and then Pinot Blanc as well. But you're not going to find much Meunier uh, down in that area there. So you're really in the, the Marne Valley and the Montan de Rams area. And, you know, just to add on to what Cedric said, you know, the stereotype in Champagne is that you grow Meunier because your soil's so bad you can't grow Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. <laughs> and it's really nice to show people that this is, this is wrong, that Meunier can really be nice and that you're not growing Meunier because you have bad land. I just tell about Marne Valley, but you find some other wonderful Meunier. For finish with the Marne Valley, you have Aurélien Lurquin who make wonderful uh, wine also. Uh, David Fevre. A new grower who stop with the cooperative, who become organic, who start to make wonderful money. It's in Belleval, uh, Champagne David Fevre. Uh, and of course, the boss is Jérôme Prévost, but it's not in the Marne Valley. Jérôme Prévost make wonderful wine with la closerie. It's uh, each time wonderful. Uh, Alexandre Lamblot, new young grower, make wonderful money too. And the, more, the last, uh, more beautiful Meunier that I test uh, is not come from uh, Marne Valley or Valley de l'Arne. It's come from uh, La Côte des Blancs, from Cramont. And it's uh, 
the Gibora uh, winemaker uh, with prohibition. Oui. You have to test that. It's uh, amazing. Gibora make a uh, very straight, very big tension wine. And when you test this Meunier, you know that it's Meunier from Gibora. Uh, Richard Fouquet, the winemaker, uh, is amazing. It's wonderful Meunier. So that's super exciting because more and more we find uh, beautiful Meunier. And uh, I think it's just the beginning. Thank you. Hey, we've got more questions now. Scott's back up. I'm going to unmute you, Scott. Go ahead. Thanks, Frenchie. You Bonsoir, bet. Cedric. Bonsoir, Scott. So, um, Champagne certainly has a, re a reputation for being a wonderful food wine, and I love food pairings. And so, do you have any uh, favorite foods that you prefer to eat with your wines? Ah. Huh, it depends on the season, but uh, <laughs> uh, in, in winter, when it's a uh, Christmas moment, I love uh, Lord de Gênes, uh, my regular, with oyster. It's very good, and it, it's very, very good. After, uh, um, my favorite is when I don't know uh, what I eat and some chef make beautiful food with my <laughs> wine because uh, I, I never have idea um, for, me, for pair my wine with food. Uh, and, and for be serious, when I'm, I'm not, like in my job, I never drink my wine. <laughs> uh. I drink all the time wine from friends. Alors not only champagne, of course, but white, yeah. red, uh, orange, orange wine. I, I, I love umber wine but from different friends. And, and, and I think it's very important be, because um, uh, if it, maybe 10 years ago, when I start to drink huge wine uh, from Emmanuel Reynaud, from, uh, from Ramonet, from uh, all the wonderful growers that we, that we find everywhere in the world, uh, sometimes I, I come back to my winery, I drink my wine, I test my wine and I say, Oof. Cedric, you still have some job. <laughs> so, so, so right now I, I continue, you know, to to meet people. To I, when when I travel, I try to to meet a wonderful grower, and he can give maybe half hour just for talk with them, and and uh, and we exchange, and and maybe I come back with a new idea, and and maybe my wine have also uh, evolution because I have the chance to meet people like that. Okay. We've got one more question from, a, David, oh, from David. Sorry, David. Sorry, guys, but oh, yeah. uh, just want to, uh, yeah, if, if, if I may, uh, one comment about the food pairing with uh, Meunier. Uh, here oui. uh, in Berlin, we have just uh, amazing Asia food restaurants and in uh, my star niveau, the Michelin star restaurants, they are like crazy to pair uh, Asia style food with Meunier, with these curry, um, curry flavors, green curry, uh, chicken with some uh, spicy sauces, uh, sauces and uh, sh 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 <laughs> later on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she wanna get ice cream just uh, with PJ masks, yeah. So it's good. it's pairs together too. <laughs> but yeah, um so the this Asian flavors like um noodles with some rolls with uh, I don't know, Tim Rao restaurant, the uh, one of the famous uh, in Berlin. They they just crazy about menier with the spicy, spicy food. Yeah, what do yeah, you yeah. say? The, the, meunier, it... the meunier work really good with uh, some spicy food. You know, uh, you can take one third delete with tapas, little, little bit spicy, and it work really good. Uh, that's right. It, it's not uh, the classic way about champagne. It's not, uh, we don't think about that first, but me, I love my meunier with a spicy food. It, we can't make a very precise tasting, but we, we, we get a very big pleasure. Mm, I'm agree. Okay, David, you've got another question? 
um, you might have to unmute yourself. Looks like you're muted yourself. There we go. Uh, Cedric, I noticed when you were uh, you know driving around the vineyards that you have a lot of separate plots in the yeah, sites. Forty-eight. I know you're, for, for you're very conscientious about your farming, but how do your neighbors' farming practices affect you? Alors, more and more, more, more and more, I have uh, serious neighbors, uh, but. Uh, Everybody respect everybody. Uh, I just ask, ve ask them that they don't touch to the road that we have. So I, I prefer walk the wall. Uh, I don't want um, something for kill grass, chemicals, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but sometimes you have some complicated neighbors. Um, and also we don't have to forget that the roots of the vineyard minimum do eight meters. You know, here you have only the principal route, but mm -hmm. you can double. So uh, it's that's why uh, uh, the organic uh, vineyard, completely organic, is like um, nice philosophy. But today it's we are not ready for that. Um, right. But uh, I think that the champagne move a lot. And uh, people work and spend a lot of money for, for change the practice, the, the, the philosophy, the, the, the work every day. And, and, and I'm, I'm really good with 95% of my neighbors. And sometimes they ask me uh, some Cedric, what, what do you think about uh, this, uh, this machine for work for soil? No, no, no. So that we, we, we are in a big evolution. Uh, we can't change everything uh, right now. But when people uh, see in my vineyard that, uh, that we, they, they know that uh, we don't work with chemicals and uh, they know that we have beautiful grapes, so they become more and more confident, you know, and... Uh, and maybe uh, we can think that, I don't know how long, but maybe in 10, 15, 20 years, uh, people who can use chemicals is a minority. Yeah, so Cedric, uh, do you think, what, what's the goal in Champagne? No herbicide in uh, 2025? 20, 25, think that, yes. Do you think that will be achieved? Yes. You know wow. why? Wow. Because because 70% uh, of the grapes are by per the big brand, and in 2026 the big brand don't buy grapes with chemicals in the soil. So you do think everyone will stick with that? Because to me that'd be wonderful if it actually gets achieved. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think so. And more the economy is complicated, and uh, more the big brand do an important choice yes. um, they, they, of course they prefer by these wonderful grapes that these grapes in a big production uh, with chemicals uh, it's the same price so even if they pay maybe 50 cents more for the beautiful grapes they pay uh, 50 cents so more of the economy is complicated in champagne mm -hmm. and it's complicated <laughs> super complicated and I, I, i'm sure that the future is not really easy uh, i don't talk for me i'll talk for the champagne i think all the new generation would take would take the, the good way five years ago 10 years ago 15 years ago we don't have a problem but uh, the new generation who arrive push a lot for change the world for change the, the production for change champagne so i think 2025 is not impossible Five years, it's okay. okay. Ne next year, already, next year, I think we see a big, big evolution. No, I, I during, would, during, yeah. during the next harvest, um, I for sure, Mouette uh, Chandon, Veuf Picot, Pommery, Mouette Moum, Perrier Jouette, all the big brands, Tétinger, Red Rare, Bill Carr, say we want. 
a grapes like that and we continue to pay the good price if you don't do that we decrease uh, the price of the grapes that's yeah, it. no, I, I think that's good because if you actually, you mentioned, you know, the, the Mooms, the Moet de Chandons, uh, the Tatanjays, to me, it's interesting that most of them have stopped using herbicides in their own vineyards, that the big challenge is the grapes they buy in because you still have, I don't want to say the lazy grower, but someone who just wants the money. And that, that seems to be the biggest problem. Five years ago, we say the big brand can't do that because, uh, for example, Moet et Chandon need uh, maybe 100 tractors uh, with uh, 100 people for drive a tractor. And, but in three years, they do that. So now, all the vineyard in, of Moet et Chandon, maybe 90% is without, maybe 100%. They work the soil. They continue to use chemicals for the leaves, but they work the soil. And, and uh, they give a listen. No, no, no. Um, they, no they, they spend no, too I much money. Because of people like you, I think uh, people had to wake up and they saw what the new mm -hmm. generation and the smaller producers was do were doing and said, holy crap, if we don't change, we will be left behind. Mm -mm. Ah, it's a super good news. Yeah. <laughs> uh, guys, I would like to add a comment about this. Yeah. Uh, just uh, I want to I want to take the opportunity in, uh, and encourage all the people to buy Grover Champagne. Please don't wait these five years with big brands. They will never put their heart in the bottle. But these small of growers course. like Cedric and and the families, you know, your all your money you will spend for this bottle will go directly to the children directly to the houses, to the, to the meals, to the good living for, for the families. Yeah? And I think this is what's mean now, so, yes? So, Santa, don't worry, all the growers that we talk about today uh, stop uh, chemicals since a long yeah. date, in fact. No, yeah. no worry about that. Uh, all people, all champagne lovers know really good who, um, who work in the good way and also um, if today we do this uh, wonderful experience for me and and uh, and if we share about a, a small part of our champagne it's uh, because you uh, follow the champagne you are champagne and you for sure tomorrow if you have a new growth that we have to test maybe you don't wait too longer about uh, this new grower so um, I'm very positive about the future of a champagne, even if we are in complicated economy, uh, even if uh, the world change, even if we have a global warming, um, I think we have a possibility to change. And we should, because um, 30 years ago, my parents used chemicals, uh, but they don't know that it's very, very bad. Uh, today, I have children, and maybe in 20 years, if I continue to use chemicals, he can say, Cedric, uh, dad, you're, you're bad boys because you know and uh, you continue to use. So I can't continue to use already today. It's impossible. I don't Nancy, want to be a bad boy. <laughs> Nancy, you're right. Yeah. Comment that, Cedric, that's the reason why I chose to visit you in 2018 and I had been buying your wines for a little bit of time before that because of the the philosophy and the belief you have about the place you use and the people that use it and what that means to you. So um, Brad is right. And thank you for continuing to, to, to practice that belief. Cause that's why I buy your wines, man. Ah, thank you very much. Frank. And because they're great wines, much like this special club Rosé is today. <laughs> Here's yeah, to you. Yeah. Uh, we have questions, Frenchy. No, sir. We're uh, we're good. Oh, Kenny just raised his hand and then put it down. All right, one more, and then we'll we'll look to wrap up. Let's see. Where's Kenny? Uh, Kenny, if you do, you still have a question? I'll unmute you. Uh, yeah. No, it was answered. I, the answer is in chat. Okay. I just see the difference between fruit and extra fruit. Thank you. Okay. Got it. Yeah, that's good to have the chat. So, all right. Um, that's it then. Oh, wait. One more. <laughs> Jeez, these keep coming in. CC again, that's truly right. 
Julie, Yvonne? Hi. Yes, it's me. So I totally agree. There's a change in France and you've led kind of the revolution in terms of like the growing aspects, the vineyard aspects. And I think we all recognize throughout the world, there's, you know, definitely a good trend with the new, new generation in terms of the starting point, which is the grapes. So I have a question, which is kind of a little bit different from that, right? We have different models in the United States, which some of us participate in and uh, Berserkers is a good avenue for that, where we have a little bit more direct access to, to the grower, right? And to the winemaker so that there aren't so many distribution channels between us. So I was going to ask, you know, is there any changes in terms of like the marketing and distribution channels within within the Champagne region or things that you're starting to see? Because as you know, the process in France is much different from the United States in terms of how how wines become from grapes to the growers, to the winemakers, to the actual customers, right? So I was, I'm just curious. That's something I don't know. Yeah, no, it's, it's very interesting uh, question. Um, I think uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday in France, uh, the most part of growers sell directly. Uh, today, the, maybe the 200 growers who work in that way uh, have also the same distribution that you have in USA. So in fact, in France, I, I don't sell any more my bottle uh, to the people who come to my winery. So people do a visit um, with me, we take time, we test everything, but they can't buy a bottle because uh, I pre-sell the bottle to all my um, professional distribution. And also in France, I have uh, like a links um, with different agents who resell to a seller, to a restaurant. So uh, it's, it's now professional. Um, for sure, uh, the importer in US uh, um, follow really good um, the champagne and in particular the champagne grower for avoid uh, to lose the new rising star, you know? So maybe the rising star don't arrive very quickly in a, in a, um, in American market, in particular because sometimes a grower start with only three thousand, five thousand bottle, not cases bottle. So it's difficult to find in your market for sure. It's more easy in in Champagne or in France, uh, but I think uh, you have a, you have super organization uh, in the United States. Uh, for me, I have a wonderful distribution with Skernik Wine, uh, who are in New York. Um, it, they, they are wonderful, and, and I know that um, they look for very precisely for the new rising star in Champagne. So, Cedric, your your solution to uh, Americans who want to try more grower Champagne is to move to Champagne. So oh, we can try yes. more easily. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, of course. The the the, the best. The base, maybe, <laughs> is Le Printemps des Champagnes that, that we lose this year. Ah, man. And, and, and the best also yeah. because uh, it's like a wonderful party. Uh, I love uh, walking in Reims during Le Printemps des Champagnes and, and you meet uh, friends from Australia, from uh, United States, from China, from not China maybe, but because not too much China people drink champagne, but from Singapore, Hong Kong, it's amazing moment. And, and um, it's a very big moment with maybe 20 uh, tasting with each time, maybe 20 grower. And you can mm. in five, six days, uh, test a lot of different wonderful champagne. Uh, uh, right. But more and more, you have different masterclass also organized in uh, in United States. Maybe maybe we need to do that more. We're getting started. We're trying to do Zoom now. It's the first for us. Yes. Yeah. Start somewhere. It's okay. my second. It's my second Zoom, and uh, it's very very interesting. Oh, you're hey, doing a great job. A you're a fun special <laughs> guest. You zoom in, going around in your Segway and get to see the vineyards and the chickens. And my fortune. Well, dang. <laughs> All right. But we we are lucky more. because uh, you, you call me uh, when uh, you, you, we still have light. 
that uh, sometimes the first yeah. Zoom that I do, it's already night, so it was more complicated. We'll, take, we'll treat you that way, Cedric. Uh, we well, got one more question, then we got then we should wrap this up. This is uh, Troy and Gina. Go ahead. Yeah. Cedric, how can you be a member of the special club if you are a negotiant mm -hmm. manipulant? Ah, it's a very good question. You can't be uh, you can't be in the special club uh, if you buy grapes that you don't produce. Before, it's right. Uh, in the special club law that you have to be recolto manipulant. Today, it's right that you have to produce 100% of your grapes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that. Uh, all, all my friends uh, in the Club Trezor changed this law for me. <laughs> Yeah, which is exactly. actually good no. because the Club de Tresor never used to change their laws and everybody left because they would not uh, come up with better rules. So this is good. That's, that's right. And, and in fact, uh, I, I'm not lucky uh, because my family don't have too much vineyard. So for continue uh, and, and for grow a little bit, I, I have to find a solution. And I find this solution, but, but that's right. And, and uh, I don't want to do something else. It's impossible for me to buy grapes that I don't produce. I want control. I want. I. I, I, <laughs> I spend too much energy in my vineyard for buy grapes uh, who come from the neighbors who spend less energy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so how big could you get, Cedric? How big would you be comfortable with your vineyards being where you could still take care of everything? Ah, it's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> Alors, um, before I'm too small, when I have, when I have five hectares, I can't uh, have all this wonderful stuff that I have uh, today uh, around me. Uh -huh. Today, I work 10 hectares. I can have people... Uh, uh, a girl with me in uh, the office uh, who are very, very, she is very professional. Um, I have one guy who, who are mechano and who drive a tractor very good. So all my machines are very clean, you know. Uh, well, so now I have wonderful stuff. Uh, for sure, uh, if, I, if one day uh, I know, I, I, I understand, uh, that the year after I can't increase the quality of my wine because I, I'm too big, I stop. So I can't be too big with this stuff. For example, during the harvest, I don't want too much grapes to arrive because if too much grapes arrive, I can't make a good job. In 2018, it's all, it, that's why I decided to resell all my harvest system for rebuild a new one because I know that I don't do a good job with my one press, 4,000 kilo pneumatic. Too much grapes arrived in 2018. It was a year amazing. Grapes everywhere, too much grapes. So my harvest, I think we, we do harvest during 18 day, but it was too much. Too much grapes during 18. too much for everybody in 2018. Every press, yeah. people were scared. So well, uh, uh, well, my philosophy is make very really good wine i don't know today uh the winery here the cellar no, enfin, the cellar is start to to be too small in fact uh, i start to refill the old cellar of my grandparents you know i pass in segway just uh, in my grandmother's house and right now, I put all the special club, all the terre delete, all anecdote, all special club rosé in uh, my grandmother cellar because um, it's very good cellar and um, it's a wine that I have to forget five years. <laughs> Donc, uh, so, uh, so I just keep here uh, the stuff with a not too much evolution, not too much aging. But it's a good question. Okay. I have no idea about the answer. For the moment, it's very exciting uh, because um, you know all the stuff that you have here. It's uh, 
half million euro. And I can't buy all this crazy stuff who kick the ass of my wine uh, with only uh, five hectares and uh, more smaller production. So because more you produce and more you can talk, talk, talk to the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> so today I have super bunker. <laughs> Two bunkers, I right? live in the grandma's house. <laughs> Yeah, I, I I have a friend who say if you if um, you have to give to if you need if you have a credit of uh, half millions you don't sleep really good. If you have a credit of three millions, your bunker don't sleep really good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we've answered the questions, Frenchie. Yes, sir. Thank you. I just want to, on behalf of uh, Berserkers, Todd and I, and everyone that's joined, uh, Brad, thanks a lot for uh, helping. Clearly, I can't bring this body of knowledge to the topic that you can. And it's been terrific to meet you on Wine Berserkers and have you contribute in so many different threads and topics. Mm -hmm. So I hope you'll continue to do that because that's been a gain for me and for others on this participant list that I've noticed who are on today. Um, Cedric, thank you for uh, walking us around the property letting us see the chickens and the solar chicken coop that many of us saw when we first started the call. And, uh, and uh, thank you, Frank. The special thank you for this organization. It was a, it's, it was a very good uh, moment for me. And, uh, and, and I'm, I'm very happy to, to share my life with you. Thank you. And I'll see you sometime this year once uh, we can travel again. I'll, I'll drop you a note and we'll come by and say hi. With, with great pleasure. God bless all, all right. of you, Richie. Everyone, stay safe. Bye, this bye, my great. friend. Thanks, Take Frank. care, everybody. Cheers, Cedric. <laughs>